Hello everybody, this is Fun Police, and we are back with another Fire and Maneuver Nation guide. For today, we are rounding out our final European nation with that of the Kingdom of Sardinia Piedmont, or Italy. The Italians are a very interesting faction, leaning into a more quantity-based army, similar to that of Russia or the Ottomans, Although they are sort of divided, as they do have some lower quality troops, but they also have a fair amount of pretty solid overall units. So it creates an interesting dynamic, but the bigger aspect of Italy is that it has rugged on, like, everything. It is the king of rugged. There is not a nation that can beat Italy in rugged terrain. You have more options with just everything you could ever want. It's the strong suit of Italy, and they essentially have a bit of map hacks. They can kind of just not care where the map, like what is going on in a map. Rivers mean nothing to them. Forest means nothing to them. They are extremely good at flanking and attacking from every angle. The enemy has to guard pretty much every angle no matter what. They can't rely on a forest to slow down Italy. It overall makes for a very interesting play style where you play as an aggressive nation having to utilize that rugged terrain in order to help offset the fact that your units are, on general a bit worse than many of the other nation's units. If you enjoyed today's content, make sure to like and subscribe. We've now done a nation guide on almost every single nation in the game, both from the Boshin War and now all seven of the base game factions, and soon we'll be coming out the two American Civil War factions, so don't miss out on those. But regardless, let's go ahead and jump into the early period where we'll break down the units and talk about how Italy builds itself. Italy, in terms of its early period, is actually quite well-rounded. It pretty much has a roster that is very filled out for the early period, giving it a lot of options in order to make use of. It also notably has access to four rifles, which is a decent amount in the early period. Although not nearly as much as quantity nations, it is more than a nation like the Russians get, which does give them a bit of ranged options. This is especially true because a lot of their units are sporting efficiency or range drill. But starting off with our first unit, we get the Red Shirt Volunteers, a four health, three cohesion, efficiency, rugged unit. These guys are very squishy, but are very fast moving, and a very solid unit overall. No negative traits means they, as long as you keep them in something like a forest, they can actually be pretty durable. Now, they don't last long once the combat gets into, say, melee, but because of the rugged and efficiency, they can be very, very cheap ways to utilize your rifles. You also have a basic line infantry. With 6 health and 4 cohesion, it is very durable, but it sports disorganized, making it a bit weak in ranged combat. They still can help you bulk out your numbers and give you a solid line unit to make use of when you're also trying to utilize your red shirts. Then we have the red shirt Zwaves, a essentially a line version of the volunteers instead of rugged it has melee drill making it much more better in melee and it also sports extra cohesion to boot in terms of line infantry i would say redshirt zwabs are one of the better options out there durable no negative perks and even good in melee they're very well rounded in their capabilities then we have the kakatori franki I'm going to be butchering these names and I apologize, uh, but the Franchi, however you pronounce, these guys, uh, the Franks, are going to be a really, really cheap infantry unit. Now, they have really low stats and also both disorganized and breakable. This means that these guys pretty much die to the first thing that shoots at them. However, they are 35 points with muskets. That is extremely cheap. 
They are cheaper than pretty much any other infantry unit in the entire game. And that means that they can very easily add some extra units to your army for pretty much nothing. It's very easy to fit these guys in at the end of a build. And although they might not add a whole lot, they can guard a flank, act as meat shields, or just give you a couple extra units to utilize. You then have the Alpi. These are a pretty basic light infantry with good health and average cohesion, but they have rugged on them, which makes them probably the most durable rugged unit you'll get normally. They're overall decently priced, not super expensive, about the same as a vanilla line unit, and skirmishing is always a solid perk, and rugged is also very nice. If you're looking for something to sit in rugged, or just a unit that can fight in rugged, they can be a very durable option. Then you have the Bursagaliri. These are another light infantry, and sort of the elite light infantry of Italy. With good health and cohesion, they have shock, efficiency, and skirmishing. Notably, they do not have rugged, so they can't fight in forests, but they're overall very, very capable. In a way similar to the redshirt Zouaves, trading away melee drill for shock, and then also having skirmishing. They're actually kind of a jack-of-all-trades unit. Efficiency allows them to work well with rifles, but you can also use them as melee units, sending them into melee with their shock to deal devastating charges. But skirmishing can also allow them to very quickly shift into a more defensive unit, providing good fire coverage with their open order. And then we round it off with the only heavy infantry within the Italian art roster, and that is the Grenadier. A 6 health, 5 cohesion unit, as standard for heavy infantry, sporting range drill, rugged, and disorganized. This is one of the very few rugged infant heavy infantry available within Fire and Maneuver, France being the only other nation to do so. Combine that with the fact that it has range drill, and if these guys get into a forest, they are nigh unmovable to the enemy. Disorganized does make them a little worse off than they would be otherwise, the most notable thing being just that they get overwhelmed by usually higher quality nations like Britain if they try to sit out in the open. But you can very easily put these guys in a forest or have them flank, and the enemy can often do very little to stop you. Clever use of the terrain can make these guys into absolute monsters in combat, especially if they are given rifles. Moving on to the cavalry, you have mounted guides, a small light cavalry, very similar to the Franks, where they have very low stats on disorganized and breakable, but they do have rugged. This makes them really cheap, like stupidly cheap. With melee, they are 35 points, and they don't last in a melee at all. They'll essentially do one charge and then probably live for one turn and then die in a melee. But they are very fast and very easy to move through any terrain. They can wrap around the enemy and force them to respect a very cheap unit and in general, just have to be concerned about it. They can potentially charge into artillery and be effective. You could even put carbines on them, and they're still really cheap, and they can sit in forest dismounted and take shots at the enemy or harass them from the flanks. They're potentially a bit niche, but they're just so dang cheap that, similar to the Franks, you can very easily fit one of these in at the end of a build, using up those last 30 points you have, and get some value out of it. Then you have the Hussar, a basic Hussar unit. Honestly, not a whole lot to say. These guys are just kind of vanilla light cavalry. They have decent health and cohesion, but there's honestly not a whole lot to say. They are cheap. If you're looking for just kind of a cheap unit, you could do worse, uh, but if you need some unit to move around, they can be decent at getting into the rear with their high mobility. But overall, they do kind of get outclassed in the Italian roster, especially because you have many other superior light cavalry. 
Then we also have the Lancers, a much better light cavalry, which is a shock light cavalry. With shock, this unit is far better at getting into melee, and although you are paying a bit more, you are getting benefit from it. With the only other shock unit being the Bursagliri, the Lancers offer a very, very solid, cheap shock unit in order to engage those melees when you need them, and that can give them a very good and defined role. You also have the Carabinieri. These guys are pretty solid light cavalry. 4 health, 4 cohesion is pretty durable. They have rugged and skirmishing. They're overall very flexible, and probably the premier rugged cavalry that Italy has. The combination of rugged and good cohesion makes them very, very good at moving through forests and being really annoying for the enemy to deal with. Especially if they have carbines on them, they can dismount and take shots at the enemy. And overall, these are very, very solid units. If you're looking for a good light cavalry, these guys can do excellent, providing fast-moving units that can cross a forest or river and quickly get into the enemy's rear. Then you have the Cavalagari. These guys are essentially a different of the Carabinieri, but with melee drill instead of rugged. That makes them a lot better in terms of actually getting into melee, and they can be seen as sort of a different lancer. They work a bit better with carbines due to the fact that due to the fact that they overall have more perks like skirmishing to shoot with, but they can also just be used as a different version of the Lancer to deal damage and harass the enemy with. And then the only heavy cavalry available to Italy, and that is the Dragoon. The Dragoon is a interesting heavy cavalry, 6 health, 4 cohesion, they have shock and efficiency. This is the other shock unit, and the final one that Italy actually has access to. The biggest benefit of the Dragoons is that they are kind of an all-round generalist. Efficiency allows them to move quickly and dismount in order to use carbines, but they can also be utilized as heavier shock units. They're essentially the most durable shock, infantry, shock unit you have in the Italian roster, so they can play a multifaceted role, especially because they are the only heavy cavalry you have access to. Moving on to the artillery, the artillery within Italy is subpar overall. Having cumbersome on most of its units, they're slow to set up, but they don't suffer as much as other nations like the Ottomans, whose artillery also is laden with negative perks. Instead, these guys are pretty close to the most vanilla you could get these artillery pieces. It makes them overall not awful, but somewhat situational, for the most part. This 8-pound field artillery is probably the most situational of all of them. 3 range and cumbersome makes it slow to set up and it can't fire over units. It's overall, if you're looking for a cheap option to use with artillery, this is the one you go with, but otherwise it's generally better to splurge for something like the 16-pound field artillery. With four range, this artillery piece is a lot more effective, having enough range to actually shoot from safety and deal a lot of damage. It is pricey, which is a concern, but you generally have enough money lying around that if you're going to get one artillery piece, it's reasonable you can afford some of the more pricey units. You also have the 8-pound horse artillery, Essentially just a 8-pound field artillery, but with plus 1 movement. Not a whole lot to say. You pay a fair bit more for that mobility, but that's actually really worth it. Uh, Fast-moving artillery is far more effective. It takes half the time for this to get into position and set up, compared to the much slower 8-pound artillery. So the horse artillery can be very worthwhile if you're looking for more nimble options in terms of your artillery. Then we get to the 12, pound, the 12 centimeter red shirt mountain gun. This is probably the standout artillery piece within the Italian roster. Although extremely low in health and cohesion, it has indirect fire, rugged, and efficiency, and notably doesn't have cumbersome. This means that this artillery piece is 
very, very effective at moving, dismounting, setting up, and then shooting at something, giving it a lot of range and flexibility. Combine that with the fact that you can plant this in a forest, and that can be very, very powerful. It's, I would say, probably the strongest Italian artillery piece, and you do pay a lot for all of these perks, especially seeing as how weak it is. But the lack of no cumbersome makes it a very high value target and efficiency drives that up even more. It can be a very strong piece to support your other rugged troops or even just offer fire support in general. And then we round it out with the 15 centimeter howitzer. Essentially a basic howitzer. It has cumbersome but has four range. If you're looking for the maximum amount of range with indirect fire, then the 15 centimeter howitzer is where you want to be. However, it competes very closely with the 12 centimeter red shirt mountain gun. The biggest things you get are that it has more health and it has that extra range. And that extra range is actually quite good. Five range and concentrated battery can give you a lot of capabilities and allow you to blast enemies very effectively. The mountain guns, the red shirt mountain guns have to get a lot closer, and that in general can make them a bit more vulnerable. Due to Italy's quantity based playstyle, you often have a lot of options in building Italy, but one thing I need to draw attention to is pay attention to what map you are going on. If the map is relatively open, like say countryside, then it's important not to go all in on the rugged quality of your units because you're simply wasting points getting a unit that is otherwise not going to be that effective. So you need to just always check the map with Italy as Italy is a very map dependent nation. If you're going into a lot of rugged terrain, then you can load up on the rugged and pretty much just like curb stomp a lot of players. But if you're going into a very open map, you need to adapt your play style. So some examples of how you could build such an army. You could do something similar to this. A build like this focuses a bit on mixing a bit of everything. You do have a decent amount of rugged with the Carabineri and double redshirt volunteers and a mountain gun, but you also just have a lot of power in your line troops. Double grenadiers also contribute to the rugged, but can act as strong line units. You have the Bursagaliri acting as a shock unit with efficiency, and then you have double redshirt zouaves giving you some melee alongside some just in general line options. Another way could also be to build a more quality or a more quantity based build going all in on sort of numbers rather than purely going with the more elite units there's a lot of options you have here in terms of what you want but generally you're able to really fill out your roster with a variety of different units depending on what you feel you need. A build like this is a bit more of a mix mash of everything, but you have a lot of line units and you just have a very large army in general. Now, some of it is very low quality. Mounted guides and the Franks are going to be extremely weak, but you are overall getting a lot of units out of such a build, and you can combine efficiency and your line troops to overwhelm the enemy. But let's jump over to the late period and see how Italy changes with the times. Late period Italy actually doesn't undergo that drastic of a change. In fact, it only gets a single new unit available to it, the National Guard, a militia with rugged on it. With two negative perks and low cohesion, this guy doesn't hold long in combat, very similar to the Franchi. But with rugged, they are actually a bit better because you can put them in a forest or some sort of rugged terrain and they will actually hold out a bit better overall. 
The only other major change is that they get access to more modern weaponry, including rifled breech loaders alongside standard breech loaders. Building for Italy in the late period becomes a bit more interesting, however, due to the new weapons. Most notably, you can go with kind of a standard build as always, utilizing grenadiers with the new rifled breech loaders to be the anchor of your build, then kind of bulking your numbers out with some basic rifle troops, a variety of red shirts. We can even give them breech loaders in order to abuse that efficiency, and then kind of just filling it out as we see fit doing a variety of things depending on what exactly we feel we are in need of. A build like this is a bit more quality based than other nations, and you could even give the Bursagaliri either rifles or breech loaders depending on what you want. But you do have a strong foundation with the double grenadiers, you have some line troops, you have some cavalry, it's a good mix of a balanced army. There is also another sort of funny way to play Italy, and that is essentially uh, role-playing as Russia. And that involves essentially just abusing the fact that you've got a lot of efficiency on your units. Now, this is going to be quite expensive, but a build like this essentially wants you to use that efficiency to get right up in the enemy's face, you blast the enemy to bits, and you have so many units that the enemy can't deal with all of them and can't predict any of your movements. It also kind of works out because you have rugged for flanking, you also have... Uh, a lot of melee perks on these units, so you can also unpredictably go into, like, attack column and charge in and hit the enemy really hard. So you kind of catch the enemy in a catch-22 where they're just always guessing. And this is a legitimate strategy. It can be effective, although you do need to be careful because unlike Prussia, your units are a lot squishier. The first build I showed would probably be the safer option, but that is absolutely a real option because efficiency is really, really strong. But with that, we are at the end of this nation guide. Italy is such an interesting nation. Of all the European nations and all of the base nations, I would say it's probably the weirdest of them all. Combining a weird mix of sort of higher quality troops with a lot of low-end troops, and then they all just have rugged on them. It's a unit, it's a force that has to rely on a lot on its red shirt units and the rugged in order to carry the day, but it also does have a decent set of cavalry units and at least one very solid artillery piece to back it up. It's a functional nation, and if you're looking for something different, Italy can be a prime candidate to go with. But otherwise, that is the end of this video. If you've watched all the way to the end, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the other videos I've done on Fire and Maneuver. I have now covered almost every single nation in the game, including all the base nations and both from the Boshin War DLC. But also make sure to keep a, stay around for the upcoming U.S. and Confederate guides as those will be coming out in the near future, so don't miss out on those. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a good day.